You remember Jesus said uh, that you cannot put new wine in an old wine. Skin. Because the new wine will destroy the wine skin. He was talking about the new covenant. If you'll read that verse in context, he's talking about the new covenant. And he says you can't take the new covenant and, and try to pour the old wine into it. Because it will destroy the wineskin. And the wineskin is people. So if you try to teach the law and grace, we destroy the wineskin, which is people. But it was a major problem. Major problem with the Apostle Paul. <laughs> I hope now when you read your Bible, you read it with the glasses of grace. Then the Bible will make better sense to you. You'll begin to understand the Bible much more clearly when you read it through the eyes of grace. But the problem in the New Testament days, and today, 2,000 years later, <laughs> we still want to mix the law and grace. So I'm going to teach you uh, right now the full book of Galatians. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? I'll teach all of Galatians to you right now. Twenty minutes. I'm going to teach the whole book. <laughs> okay? You know, the whole book was written because in the Galatian region, Paul had won most of them to Jesus. Yeah, 20 minutes. <laughs> And teaching the whole book? Yeah. And I book ran like Nigeria, you are like this, Oma, a lady of Buna Bo. Then I take a day of Buna Long and I like a miracle. A miracle. So Paul had won most of the people in Galatia. They were about Paul Lorana Kumo, Ragalatia. Because it was a Gentile region. Now, who was the apostle to the Gentiles? Who can tell me? Yeah, Paul. Paulo. So Paul had won many of these people to Jesus. And the Jerusalem church, under the leadership of James, the brother of Jesus, <laughs> he didn't like the full gospel of grace. He didn't like it. Menor. You can read Acts chapter 15 and Acts chapter 11. He didn't, he didn't like it. So while Paul was planting churches in Galatia, people from Jerusalem that were saved but loved the law started going to Paul's churches saying, ah, oh, listen, you need to live by the law. Uh, you need to be circumcised. Uh, certain kind of foods you can eat. 
And so they're going right behind the Apostle Paul. Paul is teaching grace. The people from Jerusalem. They're following Paul. And when Paul would leave the church. They would say don't believe that okay. Don't throw the law away. And so Paul wrote a letter called Galatians. To all of those churches that those people had gone to. See, look at verse 6. Verse chapter 1 of Galatians. Verse 6. Read verse 6. Verse 6 of chapter 1 of Galatians. Okay. Verse 6 of Galatians. 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 So you see what he's saying? I came and preached to you the gospel of grace. But there is people behind me teaching, no, 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 don't listen to what Paul's saying. You have to keep some of the law. That's what he's saying here. I'm amazed. That I just left the church. And you were that quick to desert the true gospel of grace. I'm amazed at you. <laughs> that you turned to a different good news. And he says, and the good news that you're believing. Is not really good news. I preached the good news of grace. But these other people were behind me teaching some other gospel. Some other good news. But he says it's not even good news. <laughs> and then if you look at verse 12. You, I mean 11. Read 11. La la shara la inei. Wanga na shara. Kayew ni yolo unjere. The good news that I preached is not man's good news. It's God's good news. And he says in verse 12, I didn't receive it from any man. I didn't learn it from James. The apostle of the church in Jerusalem. I didn't learn it from Peter. I didn't learn it from Matthew. I didn't learn it from any of the apostles. I received the gospel of grace as a direct revelation from God. And I'm telling you God's good news. But you quickly desert the good news to believe a lie. And now we'll go to chapter 2. I'm teaching the whole book. <laughs> and look at verse 2. After I received the revelation, you can read verse 2. Yeah. Nai bala kinye ninte kulo mon supati na likyo nano tiadwa loren ma yeu nano nyayako esiai ai nara sapa ena nasira ena nasira ra ra enebesho He received this revelation from God He proclaimed it to the Gentiles which made the Jews angry Neogoro Yaudi it made the Jews angry. Their attitude is, we don't want the Gentiles to be saved. <laughs> this is just for us, the Jews. <laughs> but in the same book, 
Do you remember Paul said in the kingdom of God there's neither Jew nor Greek. In the kingdom of God there's not a Jew or a Greek. There's just children of God. That's what Paul's trying to teach them. He said, but Titus went with me. In verse 2. And I didn't force him to be circumcised. Even though he was a Greek. Because the Jews believed for a Greek to become a believer he had to be circumcised. And then in verse 4 read verse 4. Because They call themselves your brother, but they're not a true brother. But they secretly were brought into the churches. Why were they secretly brought into the churches? To spy out your freedom from the law. They were spying out your freedom so that they could bring you back into slavery again. This is what the whole book of Galatians is about. Verse 11. Chapter 2. Read verse 11. Kage wore beye eloruperiro Antioch. Naitasheki aishiraki aishiraki mayangora mayangorara amo kelio apa do yarafuiye itarafuiye. Verse 12. Tomanari eranga saaku kenda tenebo loreni. Kage wore kage beye bonu ilunganda oyungwa. Verse 13. Verse 13. Wow, do you understand what it's saying? <laughs> Are you looking at it through grace? Paul taught you're free from the law. Read the book of Romans. You're free from the law. You're free from the law. Because now you have the spirit of life in Christ. Right? The Bible says I'm free from the law. I now live by the spirit of life in Christ. So these people from Jerusalem Jerusalem were coming to the church and telling them you're not free from the law. Even Peter. Peter. <laughs> Peter <laughs> the apostle Peter. <laughs> he walked with Jesus. <laughs> he ate with Jesus. <laughs> he saw the miracles of Jesus. <laughs> so when he was there with Paul in Antioch, <laughs> Peter was eating with all of the Gentiles. Oh, that's against the law. A Jew. 
Bayaudi would never go into the house of a Gentile. If a Jew came into the house of a Gentile, according to the law, he had to go home. Take a bath. Wash his clothes. Because he was made unclean. But Peter heard the gospel of grace through the Apostle Paul. Peter hadn't heard it yet. Even though he walked with Jesus, he heard it from Paul. <laughs> who got the revelation straight from God when he went to the third heaven. Peter received that revelation. He's eating with all the Gentiles. He's eating with the Gentiles. You you remember Peter. You know, Peter, a good Jew, amen? A good Jew. You remember Cornelius? Cornelius? Remember? God wanted to send Peter to Cornelius. To his house. Ah, no way. <laughs> I'm a Jew. And he and God knew that Peter would not go. He had to give him a revelation. He was up on the roof. And a blanket comes down. It had unclean animals. And God, 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 tells Peter, eat. NASA. He says, oh, no, no. <laughs> no, God. No, 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 God. I'm, I, I know you told me to eat. But, but God, remember, I'm a Jew. <laughs> Maybe you forgot. But, but God, I know according. I know according to your law. Either you told me in your law, God. Don't eat those unclean animals. Ah, I'm very confused. I'm very. You send me a meal. It comes down from heaven. Yeah, cooked in the kitchen of heaven. And you tell me to eat it. No, 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 no. no. no I know what your law says. So the blanket goes away. Comes back again. Again. You know, Paul, Peter does everything in threes. <laughs> you know, he does everything. He denies Christ. <laughs> Jesus says to Peter, Do you love me? Do you love me? <laughs> Do you love me? <laughs> the blanket comes down again. Peter, eat. Pedro, Nasa. Now, God. Let me teach you a few things about the law. And then God says, Whatever I declare to be clean is clean. Now listen to this. God says you're clean. Whatever God says is clean is clean. Yes, he says you're clean. Yes, now Peter in his mind, he says, okay, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, I'm not happy with you. Because I'm still a Jew. And I think Peter thought God was a Jew. Maybe you think God's a Jew. God's not a Jew. God's not a Gentile. God's not a Messiah. God's not an American. God is God. <laughs> so Peter says, okay. And then all of a sudden, Someone's knocking on his door. Peter! Peter! Peter comes to the door. Huh. Uh, angels. 
Says, come Peter, I want you to go to, I want you to, go to Cornelius' house. Ah, Cornelius. 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 That's a Gentile name. Cornelius? This is an angel from heaven? And a messenger from God wants me to go to the house. Paul, Peter's very confused. He was raised to be a good Jew. And now God is telling him to do something totally different than how he was raised. <laughs> so he tells the angels. Okay, let's go. He's not happy. Okay, let's go. So the angels are walking. Peter's walking behind. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why, am, why am I following these angels? Maybe they're angels of light. <laughs> I'm going to a Gentile's house. <laughs> he goes into the house. They all get saved. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Speaking in heavenly language. The word gets back to Jerusalem. They are upset. James, the brother of Jesus. That did not get saved when Jesus was walking the earth. James, did, he didn't believe his brother. His own brother. I mean, he lived with him as a little brother. He saw that his brother was very weird. You know, his, James would say, pick up a rock. Let's throw it at those old women. Like a little kid. Like a little kid. Jesus would say, no, James, that would not please my father. <laughs> His brothers are thinking, this Jesus is very strange. <laughs> and he's my brother. When he did all the miracles, James still didn't believe him. It wasn't until Jesus resurrected that James became a believer. Now he's pastoring the church of Jerusalem. And he hears about Peter. Peter says, I'm going to have to go back. I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I'm going to have to tell the big people, the very important people, that I was inside a Gentile's house. Yeah, the whole story is in Acts chapter 11. Because they're questioning Peter. <laughs> what are you doing? Peter said, I had a revelation. A blanket came down. This is what he said. You read it on your own. And he said, and, and the angels took me to Cornelius' house. God said to preach to them. They all got saved. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Who am I to argue with God? Right after that, the Bible says, and they were all silent. Yeah, you can read it. See, he said, who am I to argue with God? So what he was telling them, do you want to argue with God? I walked with Jesus. James, you weren't even around. I'm walking with Jesus. And God told me to go. Do you want me to argue with God? That's what you're doing. You're arguing with God. The Bible said they immediately became quiet. <laughs> now that you understand all of that, now I can teach the book of Galatians. <laughs> so it said, so when Peter went to Antioch, Paul said, I opposed him to his face. 
Here's what Paul did. Peter, he called him out in front of everyone. Peter had walked with Jesus. He's the one, remember he said, by your faith I will build my church. Paul that didn't come along till many years later is correcting the apostle Peter. <laughs> He says, Peter, what are you doing? This whole time I'm here, you're eating with the Gentiles. But when James sent a group of people, you can read it, to come to Antioch, it says, they pulled themselves away from eating with the Gentiles. And it says right here, fearing the ah. circumcision party. Oh, they said, oh, people are coming from Jerusalem. I, I can't eat with you anymore, okay? I, I have to separate myself. James, the pastor of the church in Jerusalem, he's sending people to spy on my freedom. So I cannot have meals with you anymore. Because I'm afraid of the religious people. I'm afraid of what they might say about me. So he said himself. And Paul said, no, no, no. What are you doing? Even Barnabas. The one that took Paul <laughs> and introduced him to the church. Barnabas went back into the bondage of the law for fear of the circumcision point. Verse 15. I'm trying to get through the whole book. <laughs> Verse 15. You read that. Verse 15. Now there was among them Jews. We're Jews by birth. We're not Gentile sinners. Now, now, now listen to verse 16. Yet we know. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yet we know. Even by being born a Jew. A person is not justified by the works of the law. We are not justified by the works of the law. But through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also. Believe in Jesus Christ. The Gentiles believe in Jesus Christ. In order to be justified by faith. Not by the works of the law. Now look at this. The last part of verse 16. Because by works of the law. By the works of the law. No one. No one. Will be justified. We're saved by faith in Jesus. Amen. We don't put our faith in the law. 
Because the law can't justify you. You put your faith in Jesus Christ. And then verse 21. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Again, Again. <laughs> Do you believe the Bible? The Bible says you nullify, you make the grace of God nothing. <coughs> if you believe you're righteous through the law. And if you believe the law can make you right with God. The last part of that verse. Then Christ died for no purpose. Wow. If you're looking to the law, Jesus died for no reason. It's not about the law. It's about Jesus and faith in what he did for you. Chapter 3. See, I'm going to teach the whole book of Galatians. <laughs> Look at verse 1. Read verse 1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Verse 1. Mm -hmm. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 1. Read verse 1. Galatians chapter 3. I don't know how it translates, Joe. <laughs> oh, foolish Galatians. How does it say in my sight? La Galatia, oh, mada. What's the word for foolish? Oh, mada, mada. What does that mean in English? Foolish. Okay, let me translate it for you. No, my belaganagi. Oh, stupid Galatians. La Galatia, oh, mada. La Galatia. That's what he's saying. Oh, how have you become stupid so fast? Who has put a spell on you? You saw Jesus die on the cross with your own eyes. Let me ask you this. Verse 2. Let me ask you this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law? Or did you receive the Holy Spirit through faith? Okay, let me ask you the same question. Because I know you're not stupid. See, I know you're very wise. So let me ask you the same question. Did you get the Holy Spirit inside of you? Because you obeyed the law? Or because you put your faith in Jesus? Yes, amen. See, you're smarter than the Galatians. <laughs> but these poor people that snuck in. Pulling them away from grace. And then he said, You began by the Spirit. Because you were born from above. 
Tehumara. You began your Christian life because you were born of the Spirit. And then he says, Are you now perfected by the flesh? What? How do you start with the Spirit <laughs> and make yourself better with the flesh? Paul is saying, Oh, foolishness. Look at verse 10. Read verse 10. Read verse 10. Wow, that's powerful. Did you hear that? If you are relying on the law, the Bible says you're cursed. <laughs> Do you believe the Bible? If you're going to be justified by the law, you're cursed. <laughs> I didn't say it. Man, I I didn't say it. Man, I Don't get mad at me. I don't care if you get mad at me. <laughs> I'm still going to tell you the truth. <laughs> but I didn't write this. I didn't write this. God did. And if God says, if you're going to rely on the flesh, you're living a cursed life. Wow. I don't know that I can go all the way through the book of Galatians. But I have an idea. I have a really good idea. You can go home now and read the whole book of Galatians through the eyes of grace now. See, now it's going to mean something different to you. It's the same letter that Paul said, so to the spirit, not to the flesh. It's the same one. He said in the same letter, the works of the flesh are hatred, division, immorality, that's the fruits of the flesh. It's the same letter that he said, but the fruit of the Spirit. Love. Joy. Peace. Gentleness. Kindness. Faithfulness. See, again he's saying, watch what kind of seed you plant. He's doing a comparison. He's saying, Nedo, if you sow to the flesh, you just get dead stuff. You get no life. But if you sow to the spirit, you reap a supernatural quality of life. Now he's doing another comparison. Are you with me? Here's another comparison. The fruits of the flesh. The fruits of the spirit. Everybody's going to choose the fruit of the spirit. Right? If I gave you a choice. Would you like to be loved or hated? Anybody want to be hated? How many want to be loved? Oh, you like the fruit of the Spirit. Okay. Do you love to be depressed? How many love to be depressed? How many love joy? 
Kadal ngan aku nerhen tu bay. Ah, comparison. Ah, air rana nuk. You can have hate. Ini mana tu? Arno re enke ba? Depression. Enke rana ra? Or you can have love. Arhiru menor rana ra? Enjoy. Enter bay. How many of you love turmoil? Kadal ngan aku nerhen enke nyala. Troubling inside. Enke we namal, 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 namal. How many of you love peace? Kadal ngan aku nerhen serieni. See, you're making great choices. Ah, mendal aku gila. Arhiru menor lu rosi day. But what the Bible is trying to say to you? This is an easy choice. <laughs> Dead things are supernatural quality of life. All of these bad things are love, joy, peace, faith, gentleness. He's just making a comparison. So go home. Read the book of Galatians. Will you do that? Will you go home and read the book of Galatians? You're going to be surprised. You're going to have a new understanding. This time when you read Galatians, it's going to be like a different book to you. Because you understand grace now. You understood the Apostle James trying to bring him under the law. But Peter stood firm. And maybe our next session, we'll look at when Peter went back to Jerusalem. Fifteen years after he got the revelation. Fifteen years later, he decides to go to Jerusalem. Acts chapter 15. He says, you know, I'm going to have to go talk with him. Because they're very upset with me. <laughs> and maybe we'll look at that. Nah, kibung orang ini, lelaki kibung orang ini.